this video, we will discuss the broad outline of the interim budget of 2024. We will go through some of the facts and figures that have been given by the Honorable Finance Minister and we will also take a look at what are the good things that have emerged from the interim budget as well as the concerns that have been highlighted by critics of the budget. This will be important from the perspective of your UPSC prelims 2024. Before we begin, we would like to point out that we provide content-packed videos after thorough research and it would motivate us if you liked our videos, shared them with your friends and subscribed to our YouTube channel and followed us on Instagram. So let's get started. We have already uploaded videos on the meaning of interim budget, its difference between general budget and vote on account. Check out those videos for better clarity. Now we will take a look at some of the facts and numbers that have been stated in the budget. First, the fiscal deficit, which in simple terms means the difference between the revenue generated and expenditure of the government in a particular fiscal year. For 2023-24, the revised fiscal deficit is 5.8% of the GDP. The estimated fiscal deficit for 2024-25 is 5.1% of the GDP and the government wants to further reduce it to 4.5% by 2025-26. COVID ke samay mein, central government ne bhoot kharcha kiya tha to boost the economy and prevent sluggishness. But now that Indian economy has almost recovered, the government wants to tread on the path of fiscal consolidation or fiscal prudence as embedded in Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act 2003, which states that ideally fiscal deficit should be 3% of the GDP or less. Second, capital expenditure or capex which has been increased by 11.1% which amounts to an interesting figure of 11,11,111 11, crore. Capital expenditure is the expenditure that the government makes to create productive assets which have long-term impact. For example, expenditure on railways, high-tech defense equipments, building infrastructure such as schools and hospitals, etc. Yad rakhega, for every 100 rupees spent on capital capital expenditure, there is a rupees 250 increase in GDP. Third, the government is also likely to borrow less from the market. As the government stated, it has made all the investment expenditure in the economy to create a conducive environment for allowing the private investments to come in. Due to COVID-19, private investments had decreased for which the government had to step in to prevent decline in economy. But now that normalcy is returning, government will slowly and steadily decrease such investment after creating such conducive environment and letting the private sector take over investments. This is known as the crowding in and crowding out effect. Fourth, the budget has made no changes to income tax slabs. The number of taxpayers have increased by more than two times and direct tax collection such as from income tax and property tax has increased by three times since 2014. Fifth, the budget announced major economic railway program corridors for energy and mineral transportation. Three corridors have been identified majorly for freight passage. 40,000 train bogies are going to be brought up to Vande Bharat standards. Metro has been identified as necessary for urban transformation through transit-oriented development. Sixth, the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Grameen, that is the scheme providing concrete houses to the poor, will be extended to build two crore more houses. Seventh, Post Ayodhya consecration, the Prime Minister had announced the Pradhan Mantri Suryodaya Yojana to prioritize installation of rooftop solar panels. We have also uploaded a short video on this Yojana on our YouTube and Instagram channel. Do check it out. In continuation to that, the budget announced such rooftop solarization, which will be expanded through which 1 crore households will be able to obtain up to 300 units of free electricity every month, and the household creating surplus energy will be able to sell it for money. Eighth, viability gap funding will be provided for harnessing offshore wind energy potential for initial capacity of 1 gigawatt. Viability gap funding is basically grants given to support projects that are economically justified, that is, such projects lead to the betterment of the society. But such projects are financially unviable, that is, there is not enough capital to fund these projects or that not many might invest in such risky long-term projects. Ninth, focus has been given to sustainable development by providing for phased mandatory blending of compressed biogas in compressed natural gas for transports and piped natural gas for domestic purposes. Schemes for biomanufacturing of several materials like biopolymer and bioplastics have been launched. Tenth, expansion of application of nano DAP supporting dairy farmers, stepping up implementation of Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana, ensuring Atma Nirbharata for oil seeds. These areas have been focused on for the agro sector. A roadmap for Blue Economy 2.0 has also been mentioned, which targets the fisheries sector. Eleventh, a corpus of rupees 1 lakh crore. 
to be provided to encourage private sector to scale up research, development and innovation in sunrise sectors. Sunrise sectors refers to those sectors or companies that are relatively new yet have potential for a quick boom. Bharat is also aiming for Atmanirbharta in research and development of deep tech that is very advanced scientific innovation. Twelfth, the government is increasing the target of Lakhpati Didis from 2 crore to 3 crore. The government is also going to actively promote the vaccination program to prevent cervical cancer. Thirteenth, the spiritual tourism will be given boost. Other than that, states will be continued to be given interest-free loans for 50 years so that states can undertake reforms within their territory. The negatives of this budget is being said that there has been neglect of the farmers in this budget as no step has been taken towards rationalization of food and fertilizer subsidy. For the previous fiscal year, there has been budget cuts in health and education and a large chunk of the allocated money has remained unspent. Core of core schemes meant for the disadvantaged and marginalized sections of the society, such as scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, have seen less spending as is evident from the spending for umbrella scheme for development of scheduled castes. The government has also missed its capital expenditure target in 2023-24 fiscal year. Some have even pointed out that in terms of divestment target, the government has failed to mobilize rupees 50,000 crore sales and has revised it to a very moderate rupees 30,000 crore for fiscal year 25. Other than these, special mention has been made of the Eastern India comprising of Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Orissa and West Bengal as the finance minister stated that these identified states must become engines of growth in the Amrit Kal. Finance ministry has given a new definition of GDP which now stands for Governance, Development and Performance. Digital Public Infrastructure or DPI has been called as the fifth factor of production along with land, labour, capital and entrepreneurship. The Finance Ministry stated that India was moving towards the fiscal glide path which was proposed by the NK Singh Committee and refers to the route taken by the Finance Ministry to meet its self-set fiscal targets which is generally on the lower side. The government wants to focus on the four new caste groups that is poor women, youth and the Annadatta that is our farmers. Keeping in mind the rising population population that Bharat is witnessing, the government has called for the establishment of a high-powered committee for extensive considerations of challenges arising from population growth and demographic challenges. All in all, this budget is a reflection of a non-populist, fiscally prudent Bharat. As the Indian economy in the post-COVID era moves towards recovery, freebies and subsidies have to be rationalised and the government must reduce its borrowing in order to bring down its fiscal deficit. But all the while maintaining a healthy capital expenditure to ensure that the private sector is encouraged to invest in the Indian economy. By identifying major stakeholders, this budget is a roadmap to what the Honourable Prime Minister calls a developed India or Vikshit Bharat by 2047. This brings us to the end of our video. Please do like, share and subscribe to our videos and channel on YouTube and follow us on Instagram for more such content-packed videos that will help you in your UPSC preparations. Thank you for watching this. I will see you in our next.